Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Best American comfort food. That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcast should have a theme song. Podcast should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Can you, this is, uh, this is so nitpicky, but it makes me laugh. <laughs> yes. Can you do it one more time and say the T? Best American comfort food. There you Did go. Did I get both the T's? Cause you went, the first time you went, best American comfort food. <laughs> comfort food. Comfort food. Uh, best uh, uh, American uh, comfort food. Best American comfort food. <laughs> well, now you're just f***ing around. <laughs> I tried. I'm trying to be what you want me to be, Mark. I'm trying to hard. <laughs> oh, God. Hal, have you been cooking a lot? I have been. I made a dish that is really, really good and very simple. And I, I know I didn't invent it. But we had a bunch of fresh vegetables. So I, I bought vegetables last Friday. We're recording this. On Thursday, the 9th of April. Yes. I bought last Friday some fresh vegetables. They're still good. I'm cooking with them tomorrow. But I had other fresh vegetables that I bought prior to that. They were still wrapped and also still good. So I wanted to use them all. So I took some zucchini and yellow squash, mm-hmm. cut it into slices, then cut those into qu- like quarter, little quarter pieces. Mm-hmm. And sauteed them with chopped onion okay. and chopped green pepper. Nice. Then the, the olive Sounds oil, very salt, healthy. pepper. Yeah, olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic powder, all that. Mm-hmm. Then I, in a slow cooker, I dumped two cans of Great Northern Beans. Mm-hmm. I added the vegetables, mm-hmm. then started cooking that. So it's almost like it becomes like really juicy because you got all the water. There's a lot of moisture in there. Sure. Then I take a pound and a half of ground turkey, mm-hmm. saute that and season it, put it in, and then the whole thing gets a jar of Mazetta marinara sauce. Oh, okay. So what what would you call this? I call it like a, what is it, like a goulash? It's, for me, it's like a comfort food. Yeah. It makes me feel good. Yeah. It does. It, I mean, it's super, it like just every detail of that is super comfort foody. Yeah. You know, like just aside from the, the crock pot alone or the slow cooker. Do you yeah. use a crock pot or are you an instapot guy? I guess the instapot is the opposite of a slow cooker. Mark, I have an instapot. And mm-hmm. let me tell you, I use the slow cooker because I, I, we have not, we bought an instapot months ago. Mm-hmm. Months. I don't even remember when it was. It was sometime in like mid 2019, let's say. Sure. That's the time that everybody got one, right? Oh yeah, for sure. We're definitely on that trend. Okay. <laughs> and we're not way late to it. So we got the Insta- Instapot. Neither of us have cooked with it. I'm terrified that it's going to blow up while we're doing it and, and, uh, we'll take like half of the apartment building. What is it? What is it? A pressure cooker? It's like a pressure cooker, and I, I'm okay. sure it's like idiot proof, but I just have a, I'm surprised you don't have one. So I feel like that's something you would have. No, I'm a, I'm an air fryer guy. I've become an air fryer guy. I mean, I lo- look, there's nothing wrong with an air fryer, yeah. but an air fryer is not as, ver- like you use the air fryer for some stuff and then you can slow cook. You know what? You a crock pot? I, I do have a crock pot. Actually, I have two crock pots. One, uh, is a Mickey Mouse crock pot. Oh. Yeah. I use the air fryer for absolutely everything now. I mean, it is in twice daily use. During, uh, is, during this stay at home order. What is the most non-traditional thing you've made in the air fryer? I invented a thing. I think I invented oh, it. Okay. Uh, I might have invented it. Somebody else probably did it first and better, but whatever. I, this was my version. It's one thing I noticed it can do is because it's basically, it's just a box that gets hot with a fan in it, right? Sure. And as we learned from our infomercial episode, there will always be a box that gets hot with a fan in it that's for sale on some as seen on TV thing. Yes. But one thing that it does that I think is great is you can set the temperature really low to like 170. Okay. And so with the temperature at 170 and the fan on and doing it for like an hour, much like sun-dried tomatoes, I made – first I roasted them inside the air fryer. I roasted some bell peppers. Then I sliced them up. Then I dried them. So it's almost like it has the consistency of sun-dried tomatoes, but it's bell peppers. 
And I now I put them in omelets. I put them on tostadas. I'll mix them in with a burrito. I'll do all kinds of stuff with them. Well done. So that's sort of the weirdest thing I've made with it. Mm. I did make cornbread with it once. And because the air swirls around inside in a cyclone, uh, when the cornbread came out, it had this nice, it looked like a dole whip. It had like a little on the top. Oh. Yeah. Look at you. Look, man, I love me some air fryer. And you love comfort food. We both love comfort foods. We're we do. We're talking about food over and over again. Uh, we'll, by the we'll way, we, <laughs> no, we have done now since the, I don't know who put together the, the statistics on our show. I did. Was it you that fully yeah. 20% of our episodes have been about food? Since yeah. then, since I found that out, 100% of our episodes have been about food. That was three episodes ago and all we three love of talking the last. About it. Yeah. Yeah. It's look, we're basically food court. Yeah. That's our yeah. new name. We're yeah. the food court. Yeah, that's right. You hear we're that, Doughboys? We're, we're the judges of food court. Yeah, what, you hear that, Doughboys? We want to work with you. That's what I'm saying. Is that boys. a is that a food podcast? That is a food podcast. Though. Yeah, very popular. Are they on the Maximum Fun Network? No. Then I do no. not know them. I believe they're. No, oh, I like. I uh, please bleep Ken. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. We, Anna Griffin asked this and she asked it recently because this is like the time, not only because we're all at home and we can make those sort of favorites from our childhood, but also because this is a very stressful time. We are all mm-hmm. slowly losing our minds trapped inside. I, some of us are doing better than others and on different days that switches. So this is about like, uh, this is like the time for comfort food now more than ever. This is the time that we, well, or comfort in general. Yeah, comfort in general, but it takes food for him a lot. I like I wasn't the the kind of kid who who would get like a cookie when he got hurt. Mm-hmm. You know that you know the thing like you get an owie, you get a cookie. <laughs> sure. That's this seems like a bad idea. I'd never had that, but what I did, what I got was like <laughs> rarely having stuff. Like the worst cookies we had were Nilla wafers. Oh, those Remember are Nilla? terrible for you. <laughs> yeah, they're they're <laughs> yeah, just the most decadent Tan disc. Dude, all my cookies eat. as a kid were in a green snack wells fat free box. Oh no. Mm-hmm. Oh, the worst. Actually, the f- snack wells devil's food cake were pretty good. Do you think those are real? I, I don't think those are actually. By the way, Jennifer loves those devil's food cakes, the snack well. They still make them? Oh yeah. Oh, I like that. She I did not them. know. I gotta go down to the marina and get some. Come on down. I Y'all got toilet those. paper in your stores there? Maybe. Ooh. Y'all got any of that toilet paper? Hey, man, I, y'all got any of that toilet paper up in your stores? So just walk into a store. Hey, y'all got any of that toilet paper here? Nope. All right. <laughs> then leave. <laughs> hey, y'all ain't got any of that toilet paper here? This is a bank. All right. See you later. <laughs> Years ago, some when I was in college, some buddies of mine and I, he had one of these uh, punching bags that looks like a person, if you've ever seen one of these. And then it's uh-huh. got the big weighted sand-filled thing on the bottom so it doesn't topple over. It's like a bot bag. Yeah, like a bot kids. bag. And we needed to fill up the bot bag, but also we were having a full day of fun. And my buddy John was dressed like a lunatic. Uh, I think he was wearing like the red, white, and blue Rocky shorts. Sure. Uh, and maybe a Corona tank top. Look, this was college. Yep. And it was like, it was like the college costume. Like he was going to a costume party dressed as college student. Okay. <laughs> and we had walked from the hardware store next door to the liquor store. And in he walks in his American flag shorts with a wheelbarrow full of sand and announced to the whoever was listening in the liquor store, okay, everybody, it's all right. I have the sand. I just need the beer, which I'm certain confused so many people in that (laughs) store. Yeah. And that man is now the Secretary of Commerce. <laughs> uh, no, that man, uh, is actually now a very successful television producer. Hey! Right? That's how you do it. Yeah. Get flashy. He created a TV moment when he walked into that store. He knew. That's right. He knows. He knows moments. Yeah. We're not here to talk about TV moments. We're here to talk about comfort food. Yes. And so uh, we've broken this down. Kate McManus has given us an exhaustive list of the best, exhaustive and also specifically whittled down from more exhaustive, to uh, a pretty tight list of regional American comfort foods and some comfort foods that are general Americana that aren't specific to any one region. 
Yes. Now there are, we're going to stick to America for this one. This is best American comfort food. And there are, there will be a few, I think, international dishes in there. How do you want to go about this? Do you want to, to take something from the general and then take some of the regional stuff? I mean, what, what? Yeah, I think we can go because we've got, uh, let's see, we have Cause you one, said two, to three, me, four, five. We have, uh, set, we have seven regions. And then, uh, and then general U.S. comfort foods. Now hold on for a second, Mm -hmm. sir. You, why why are you? This sounds very accusatory already. No, you sent me a text Uh because I told Kate the topic before you. Rightly so, I probably should have told you, (laughs) but I didn't want you to say no. And then uh, I also forgot. (laughs) Yeah. And then I see that Kate has put cheesesteak on here, and I think that you thought that. I was putting this topic out there simply because I wanted to pick the cheesesteak again. Yeah. I totally, I, I totally thought that this was just Hal going, Oh, here's another one that cheesesteaks can win. So I'm going to do this topic. Here's what I think. Uh huh. And the reason why I don't think it's the cheesesteak. Ooh. I think a good comfort food, the best comfort food and the comfort food you get at a restaurant mm-hmm. is something that reminds you of a dish you ate at home. Yeah. So the best comfort food is home cooked and there are people. Uh, who make cheesesteaks in their home and make them very well in the mm-hmm. Philadelphia area. I've seen it done. But by and large, that is a pl- that you go to a pizza place. Sure. You don't like make cheesesteaks. You go get cheesesteaks. So it yeah. is that cheesesteak is eliminated for that reason. Wow. We're talking like casseroles slash uh, the hot dish. Sure. If you're from Minnesota, America. it's called hot dish. Yeah. Kate's very specific about that. We're talking about things you would most likely make at home or there is a version at home Mm -hmm. that you are constantly trying to get when you go to a restaurant, right? Like, you know, think of the the best dish that your mother made for you. Like, I love my mother's scrambled eggs. They were the best Mm -hmm. scrambled eggs. So that was like every time I get scrambled eggs somewhere, that's what I'm trying to get. And when I make them, I'm trying to recapture that. I've never had a meatloaf as good as my mother's meatloaf. There you go. Yeah. The same. I, my mother made really good. She made a lot of turkey meatloaf. There was some meatloaf growing up, but then it switched to turkey meatloaf, and I I loved it. Like those, I've never had meatloaf as good as my mother's, and, uh, and that so that is like a really good example of a like that is a comfort food, right? No, oh, absolutely. I would put that on the Mount Rushmore of comfort foods. Yeah, it's going to be a serious contender. Though I, as I'm looking now and realizing, I don't see it. On so it must have already been eliminated by Kate McManus, but Kate, we're putting it back on the meatloaf. Yeah, I don't see meatloaf Kate, on here. I know but the meatloaf, but it's she, a meatloaf. She has like three different versions of hot dish on here. <laughs> she had the tater tot hot dish. <laughs> we have specific to her to her specific house to Kate's house. This is a peek a peek inside Kate McManus, our crack researcher, inside her family's so the tater tot hot dish. Uh, hot dish being the Minnesota word for a casserole. Yeah. And then chicken wild rice soup. I mean, that I do love a good chicken soup. Yeah. I mean, soups in general are very comforting foods. And there are a few that are on here. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we want to jump right into that or if you – like, how do you want to tackle this? Knowing that it's going to be something you make at home, is it better to go region or is it better to go styles of, of like, loaves versus soups versus – the pasta dishes versus baked things. Um, I, it, I'm down for either way. I, what I have in front of me right now is broken down by region. So yes. my, my brain doesn't want to do extra homework. Okay. So I'm happy to do it by region. I'm also happy to, but I do think that we should, uh, I like the pull one from each category and then pit them against one another in a final. Yeah. I mean, cause like if you go to the American South, mm-hmm. there's, it's all comfort food. Here. Yeah. Oh, it's well, let's so uh, let's go. Let's go by region. Uh, okay, let's let's, let's so let's start with the American South, where I am yes. from. Yes. Some real classics on this list. We've got chicken and waffles. Yes. We've got biscuits and gravy. So good. Grits, just general fan. grits. Sure. Uh, fried green tomatoes, chicken fried steak, the yeah, state sure. food of Oklahoma, which is uh, the dumbest name for a food. Because you expect it to be chicken, but it's steak pounded, pounded flat, breaded, mm-hmm. and fried. Yeah, this is a this is a good list. It's not quite as exhaustive, though. I some of my dishes might be specific to my family. You know what I mean? So yeah, I I think I, I like I have a winner from the South that's not even listed here, and I bet you do too. Well, I would say barbecue is a huge comfort food in the South. But is that a home food? 
It, it you, yeah, it's frequently a home food, but I guess you're okay. right. It's, it's, it does, it's a lot more, it can't be made well in an hour. I mean, may, and, but also maybe I'm being too strict. Maybe mm-hmm. it's like something where the comfort was you go to the local, like, uh, you know, I used to love Roy Rogers roast beef sandwiches as a kid. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite memories is walking from our house in Huntington Valley. Up the hill, down the hill, and up the hill again because we lived in a really hilly street for some reason. Then into the shopping center at the very end of it, what felt like the longest trek possible, you mm-hmm. would get to the Roy Rogers and I would get a roast beef and fries. And I it was like – it always made me so happy. That was a very comforting meal for me. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, For for me, it was – oddly, was also a roast beef sandwich. Uh, we had a place called Rack's. Mm. And Rack's roast beef sandwiches were one of my favorite comfort. I mean, even now – I'm embarrassed a little, but it's no surprise that one of my favorite comfort foods is straight up Happy Meal, man. Sure. You know, but like a kid's Happy Meal or do you like a like kid's Happy adult? Meal. No, I get they have the, the Mighty Kids meal was because I'm a mighty kid. Yeah, sure. Of course you are. Which is a six piece McNuggets instead of four. Oh, yeah. You get a couple extra McNuggets if you're a mighty kid. You're not getting like the 20 piece McNuggets like I've talked about repeatedly where they give you two 10 boxes and make you feel like a monster. <laughs> like they can't afford it. I'm sorry. I'm still on this, but can you just make one big box? Yeah. Really? Is it that hard? Dude, uh, there are KFCs all over Thailand and there was a thing going on. They had this very specific like Thai spicy hot chicken nuggets that they mm-hmm. were doing at the KFC there. KFCs are everywhere because it was one of the uh, first easiest, uh, uh, KFC was the first franchise in, I think, mainland China, first American food franchise, and they went nuts Japan for it. Too. And there's, there's eight hundred, there's 1800 of them in China alone. So it just wow. blew up all over Asia. Um, but the, uh, the chicken nuggets, uh, these like Thai chicken nuggets, they, came in the same bucket that like a 12 piece would come in, but it was just filled to the top with these chicken nuggets. That is correct. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, like like idiots, we each ordered one, and then we each ate less than a third. But I would say that that's one thing that does seem uh, that we're missing on this. Uh, there's like shrimp and grits is another great uh, southern comfort food that I'm a huge fan of. Uh, a dessert one, banana pudding, like that was my mm. easy go to comfort food as a kid. Yep. Nilla wafers, the uh, the worst for you cookie. Uh, with and like um, a, you can make a banana pudding with that. Yeah, banana pudding or a vanilla pudding uh, with sliced up bananas, little whipped cream on top, but also fried chicken. Yes, fried chicken feels like the ultimate Southern comfort food to me, and made well by restaurants. But also, if you if you have one friend that makes really really good fried chicken, um, then that friend is you hold on to them for life and you do not let go. Never let them go. Yeah. Never. Uh, you let them on that door with you do you as you're floating fr- in the water. <laughs> do you make good fried chicken? Is that you? Are you my no, friend who makes no, good fried chicken? No, I'm not your friend who makes good fried chicken. I who don't. Is? Do we have a friend? My friend Simone was my friend who made great fried chicken. I don't, I don't know. Because she, would, she would do it with – Simone I went to college with, but she would make it with straight up like Crisco. Oh, yes. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. I mean, and this – oh, I know. This this fried chicken was, was something special. Why isn't it Saturday I, here's, here's a dish I love. And I'm, I'm obviously late to the game on Southern food, mm-hmm. but I've, I'm now, uh, officially by marriage a Southerner. Mm-hmm. I love chicken and dumplings. Oh, chicken and dumplings is, chicken and dumplings is very good. And my mom's chicken and dumplings is kind of the only one that I love. For those who don't know, chicken and dumplings is basically like a, a chicken soup broth, but instead of chicken and noodles, it's if you made biscuits but boiled them instead of baking them. Yeah. Uh, little balls of uh, dough, little dumplings. They're like large. They're, yeah, they're kind of like large flat noodles. The way uh, Jennifer's grandmother and her mother make them. See, the way we we always had them was they were just kind of like mushy meatball shaped dough wads. They also were delicious, great. but but like you know, kind of gummy and uh, yes. and star- super starchy. And when we say like broth, I mean it's like cream of chicken. Oh, we That's always did it. We always had it. We always had it with clear broth. Oh, this is like it. This is like the ultimate. It's like sticks to your ribs. It's yeah. so good. I'm Lots guessing that she, in it. she like she was. I, don't tell my mother this. Her mom was better at making chicken and dumplings than my mom. That wasn't her you best said, dish. It was a good one. All right. So hold on. Can you say that again so I can get it clean and make it my ringtone? Oh, please. <laughs> no. <laughs> never. Never. Your mother will never know. 
I will say uh, this this list has chicken and waffles on it. Yes. I did not ever have that growing up. Okay. I did not have that until I came to Roscoe's in Los Angeles. Same. And then it's sort of it feels like a sort of retro created southern dish. Mm. But I mean I I would have waffles. We had Waffle House everywhere. We had fried chicken everywhere. So put them together. It just makes sense, as Olaf said. (laughs) So I would maybe for this one lose the waffles. But I would say for me, fried chicken is the quintessential American South, like Sunday after church, potluck, comfort food. What do you think? Of wait, which one? Fried chicken. Yeah, I I do love fried chicken. I just love a chicken and dumpling because it's so like I don't know. There's I think you might like be getting like a, a partic you might be getting a particularly good chicken and dumplings. Yeah, that may be it. But you know? fried chicken also is a great like you know, we did a whole episode about fried chicken. I'd be mm-hmm. willing to take fried chicken as a comfort food. By the way, fried chicken and waffles, there are a few different origin theories about where they come from. Have you have you listened to a word I've said or have you been Googling this whole time? Listen, I've been Googling part of the time. I heard some of it. <laughs> okay. I'm also very hungry. I'm yeah. so hungry. I ate some I of the you. thing that I made at the beginning, and then I meant to have a salad. Like, I didn't have lunch. I have to have a salad at some point. Oh, it's a nightmare. It's, I'm a mess. Um, Two places. One is the Wells Supper Club in Harlem in the 1930s. Okay. They had crispy thighs alongside deep-pocketed batter. You know that deep south section of New York City. Yes. Yeah. They did have good, they, I mean, you know, there is good soul food up there. I have had great soul food, uh, in Harlem. Uh, do you want to know what the other one is? What's, uh, uh, the, I'm going to guess, uh, Los Angeles. No, the other is that it started with Pennsylvania Dutch home cooks in the 1600s. Oh, really? Chicken and yes. waffles was a Dutch thing. But it may be, you know, I mean, Belgium, I think of as waffles. I think that might be similar to call it like the banjo is an American instrument. It'd be like sort of saying the same thing where mm-hmm. it's definitely not. Right. And it's definitely not the same instrument that it always was. Correct. Yeah. So uh fried chicken. I, I'm comfortable with fried chicken coming out of the South. That makes yeah. sense. That, uh, that is your region. So that I'm is my region. All yes. right. Let's go to your region. Let's go to the Mid-Atlantic. And yeah. on the list, we're considering New York as part of the Mid-Atlantic. So basically that yeah. I-95 corridor is what we're looking at right now. That is New right. York down through D.C. Uh, and that would be Maryland crab cakes. Uh-huh. That would be uh, the Philly cheese steak. Sure. And a New York-style pizza. So uh, out of these, only one of them is really something that people would make at home, which is a crab cake. Right. I don't know if that means it wins by default. I'm trying to think of like what the Philly – there are home cheesesteak cooks, but I just think of it as w- – when we talk about cheesesteaks, it's like what restaurant do you go to? And I guess that can be comfort food. Yeah. I mean it certainly is. That's like that's like my must-have every time I'm in Philly is to go get a cheesesteak. Sure. Though I would, I would say that – here's a question that we have to answer because this can definitely affect – Going forward, because I think if we if we rule a certain way, then this becomes a huge contender. Mm-hmm. Do you want to, based on the fact that it is, yes, you can order now with Postmates, you can order from anywhere, anything, but traditionally, pizza is the thing that while you don't always make it at home, you have it at home. It shows up at your home. Pizza delivery is ubiquitous. So... Does it become a comfort food? I mean, yeah. Is it that if it's, right. is it a comfort food because you have it at home? And while it may not always be made with love the way that a lot of these homemade dishes are and which will, might be a consideration when we get down to the finals. Um, I think it's hard to deny that people find comfort in pizza, myself included. That is true. That it, like the one restaurant I've ordered out from. In the last four weeks has been a pizza place. Yeah. It's been to get pizza and wings. And if that's the case, then this category is a no brainer. Then it's got to be pizza. It does have to be pizza. I will say though, the majority of the cheesesteaks I had as a kid, I ate at home. I didn't oh, really? them out at a restaurant. Yeah. Cause you, you go, like pick, you pick them up on the out. way home. Yeah. Or you have it delivered. It's the same place it does. Like you get pizza. Some people get steaks. My dad uh, would get a stromboli. Oh, dude. I do love a stromboli, which is yeah, just sure. a pizza rolled up. <laughs> Exactly. I wish they would cut it like sushi, though. 
So you have these yeah. perfect little discs that's of stromboli. Right. Yeah, that's the roll. And then the calzone is the folded pizza. Yeah, exactly. Pizza pocket. Yeah. Did I, I don't know if I told you this. I found this out. Do you know where my boss used to work before he moved to Hollywood? No. Wawa. <gasps> right? When are we having him on the show to talk about it? <laughs> Just to talk about Wawa sandwiches. He listens to the show, right? Yeah. Hi, Listen. Matt. Matt, first of all, come on the show. <laughs> I have a lot of questions. Second of all, thank you for your service, both in hiring Mark and in working at Wawa, the Amen. greatest store on earth. <laughs> uh, but this one is, Jeez. this one's definitely pizza. Yes. All right. So let's move to, you know what? Let's bounce back to the South. Okay. Because there's one region of the South that is very specific, has its own cuisine, and that is the okay. French inspired area of New Orleans, a region unto itself with its own, uh, with its own brand of Southern cooking. Okay. And that would be the big four, gumbo, jambalaya, po' boys, and beignets. Okay. Gumbo being the soupier version, jambalaya being the rice version, but all of them having andouille sausage and assorted crustaceans. Yeah. The po' boys being the just fry them and put them on bread. There's so much bread in a po' boy. Po' boy is great. Po' boy is, po' boy is, is so, there's so little protein on a po' boy. <laughs> for the, I mean, it's a giant hoagie roll and then everything is battered and fried on the inside. So it's, yeah. it's, you go, you gotta go through a lot of tan before you get to, uh, any sort of meat. That's my kind of meal. <laughs> Double tan, hold the meat, please. And beignets being the delicious fried dough with powdered sugar treats. Also tan. This feels like a two-way race between gumbo and jambalaya. Yeah, out of the two, I like a gumbo. I think it's gumbo, too, because like oh, like no, you wait, said before, actually, soups soups tend to be more of a comfort food. I like a jambalaya more because of the rice. I just realized that. Gumbo has rice in it? Jambalaya. Does it? Oh, Which yeah, gumbo. I, think? I like Look, a thicker... What gumbo, gu- think of gumbo as a, as a spicy fish and andouille sausage stew with rice on the bottom. Like it's a rice, thick rice soup. Okay. Jambalaya is more like a paella, like a rice or like fried rice, like a rice dish with yeah, things inside Yeah, that's what I like. It. That's what I like. You don't think that the soup though, the soupiness of a gumbo, give, like you can't really hold your nose over a bowl of jambalaya and have like warm broth go down your throat. That's true. Uh, yeah, look, I like a, I have one that I prefer. I, I'm mm-hmm. happy with, with either one. I don't have a dog in that fight particularly. I just have one that I would order over the other. Okay. Well, as the resident southerner, I'm happy yep. coming out of the south with fried chicken and gumbo as the two comfort foods. Okay. But let's, uh, let's, let's move to what, what would you say is your more area of expertise, Hal? Well, I, once we get into soups, I think we're really like, I, I know that chicken noodle soup is, let's talk about soups. Okay. Let's just, let's, just, let's make soup its own category. Soup is its own category. Soup okay. is everywhere. So we've got on our list, uh, this is in the not especially regional, but comforting nonetheless. We've got chicken noodle soup, tomato soup, specifically with a grilled cheese on the sides and matzo ball soup. Yeah. Look. And there are a lot of other soups in there. So I'm sure some people like minestrone. Some people like a thick and hearty like stew, mm-hmm. vegetable. Dinty more beef stew from a can. I grew up camping with that stuff. I, my my mother would make a beef stew from scratch mm-hmm. that I that is like I don't I don't think that there is a recipe written down anywhere. And she has been gone 12 years, so I don't I can't get it that way. Uh, it was so good. It was like perfectly like pull apart beef, potatoes, to, uh, potatoes, carrots, celery. Oh, yeah. And the broth was so good that I would just dip Stroman bread in it to to eat it afterwards. Oh. Like a stew is not a soup. Stew, let, let's they're separate because the stew, the meat is the star. Uh, the broth is is important, but I there, there's something about a soup, even in how it's put together. Stews are cooked sort of low and slow. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna add. By the way, while we're talking about this, I want to add another one to this list that I don't see on here, and that would be along the lines of a beef stew. It uses all the same ingredients. Uh huh. Is it pot roast? Yes. Like a pot roast feels like the meal version of a, the, the more, I don't know, the less wet version <laughs> of a beef yeah. stew. It's a pull apart, like a brisket too. A brisket is, yeah. uh, is, is a very similar kind of idea. That is another thing I'm going to add. A lot of slow brisket. cooker things appearing on here. Oh, slow and slow. Yeah. Just do it to, to, um, but of these please. soups, of these soups, matzo ball, chicken noodle, and tomato with a grilled cheese. I mean, 
Yeah. Chicken noodle soup is synonymous with comfort. It is, as is the tomato soup and grilled mm. cheese, like those those Campbell's commercials that come in from the cold. Oh, and have a yeah. Tomato soup with some grilled cheese. They're great. But I would go to the grave fighting for matzo ball soup. Okay. Because it's so good. I'm making it, you know, we're, we're in Pesach right now as of this recording. It started last night. Uh, happy, uh, belated, happy Passover. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Zis and Pesach to all of the, uh, to everybody out there celebrating. I, I love, I, matzo ball soup is like, this is the time of year for it, right? Yeah. I will make it anytime because it's so good. It's so comforting. If I don't feel well, if Jennifer doesn't feel well, I make it for her. And it's, that's Jewish penicillin right there. Yeah. How big are your matzo balls in your soup? Jennifer likes them a little smaller. I like mm-hmm. to make gigantic ones. Where like where it's like just one big matzo ball surrounded by broth. No, not that not it's not like Jerry's famous deli. Because Jerry's is a, Jerry's is the one that I think of when I think of matzo ball soup. But also they're they're uh like there's no flavor to their matzo ball. Which means they're not cooking in the broth long enough. It means that they're mm-hmm. cooking it and holding it back somehow. You want it to simmer in the broth for as long as possible. Generally, you do it for like 20 minutes, but mm-hmm. I'll do it for even longer. I'll add noodles at the very end just to add something special. But I'll do like fresh carrots. I'll do celery. I put an onion in. Sure. It's like I'm using a box mix, which is what my mother did. That was mm-hmm. like her sort of family version. And then you dress it up. And it's so good. You add chicken to it. Like it's a full – it's a meal in a pot, and it's super comforting and tastes great. I made it one year, generally for Jennifer's grandmother's birthday. We'll have a party, and everybody will make soup. Like they each make mm-hmm. their own soup to to bring to the dance, and it's great. Lots of really good food. Nice. And I like one a soup year, party. I made my matzo ball soup, and you know most of the people there had never had matzo ball soup before, mm-hmm. and it was a big hit. Of course, it was. It's matzo ball soup. It's delicious. <laughs> exactly. And you have a delicious. particularly great family recipe for it. Yeah, yeah, it tastes very good. It's hard to mess up. And that's that's part of what's so I am, great about it. Look, I'm happy to I'm happy to uh watch Matzo Ball Soup pull an upset uh in this round. Yep, it just happened. All right. Well, that's in the soup of the soups. Yes. So let's leave the regional for a minute while we're looking at this section and I'm watching Hal type on my computer screen, which is very odd. Will you uh also write in meatloaf because we had not Hal, stop. Now Hal's just highlighting and bolding and italicizing things. Look, I'm just, I'm remembering the finalists because we have New York. Did you just, hold on. You just picked a finalist we didn't discuss. Fried chicken, gumbo. Well, we're going to get to that in a second. We got gumbo, fried chicken, New York style (laughs) pizza and matzo ball soup. I think something that should get an automatic buy to the finals because it is a comfort food to everybody, whether they make it out of a box or they make it from a home recipe. Yeah, I know where you're going. You're right. I watched him highlight mac and cheese on here, and I was like, hey, we haven't even discussed – well, he's right. (laughs) All right. But so let's look at uh, the other non-regional U.S. foods. Yes. Latkes, potato pancakes. Yeah. Casserole, very varied. My favorite growing up, my mom made a great chicken and broccoli casserole. Oh, very good. That was fantastic. Chicken pot pie, pot roast, beef stew, brisket, and meatloaf. Oh, man. I mean, is there anything on this list that I guess I'm having difficulty with things that traditionally are deemed comfort food and what I personally find to be the most comforting? Much like chicken noodle soup is, I think, you know, commonly like, well, that of course, that's the comfort food. But it's like, no, but let's give matzo ball soup a chance. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like I look at brisket and I look at meatloaf and I think, well, meatloaf is synonymous with comfort food, much like uh, some of these other dishes are. Yeah. But let's give brisket a shot, even though I will probably wind up on team meatloaf. I'm on team meatloaf, too. I think it is the most comfort food because it's something that not only do you like it as a kid, but then it Mm -hmm. reminds you of times of like – Family it's dinners. such a nostalgia food for me. It's a nostalgia and it, and it transports yeah. you and you feel comfortable and it's like, you know what? I just want some meatloaf. Yeah. And anything that you would say that about it is kind of the definition of a comfort food. And that feels like the comfort food of comfort foods. Yeah. I feel like out of this category, this just In sort of category. general Americana, chicken pot pie, pot roast, stew, brisket and meatloaf and casseroles even. Casseroles are, are, are tough because they're so varied. Yes. 
And latkes are delicious. Are you sour cream or applesauce? Did we talk about this? I'm an applesauce guy. I'm not a huge fan of latkes. I think they're fine. Yeah, I like you them know, a lot. You eat them because it's that time of year. I, I know other mm-hmm. people absolutely love them. And I'm a big fan of the potato and its many uses. Mm-hmm. It's never really done it for me. Maybe, maybe I just didn't have very good ones when I Dude, was Dude, it's the, it's the combination of mashed potatoes and pancakes. It's two great things rolled into one. <laughs> That's true. You're, look, you're not telling any lies here. But I think of these meatloaf is, is definitely going to be the winner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's take a break right now. Mm-hmm. I think we have we have a little bit more to talk about. We could get back to some of the regions because that was a big like non-regional dip. So we're yeah. going to hear from some of the other great podcasts on the Maximum Fun Network. And when we come back, we will finish up the other regions of the country and decide once and for all the best American comfort food. Oh, yeah. Hey, Max Fun listeners. Have you been listening to Max Fun for a while and you've just been wondering, where's the new Flat Earth podcast I keep hearing about? Well, here it is. We give you all the facts on NASA's lies and how we know that the Earth is actually flat. Just, just kidding. kidding. <laughs> this is Ono, Ross, and Carrie, and we join fringe religious groups. We undergo alternative medical treatments. And we hang out with people like 9-11 Truthers, Flat Earthers. We find out why do people believe strange things. We join them, and we tell you all about it. We have a lot of fun. We make a lot of friends. Yeah, we do. We joined the Mormons. We joined the Scientologists. We got acupunctured. We got fire cupped. We got ear candled. We've done it all, and we're going to keep doing it all. Why don't you check out Ono, Ross, and Carrie at MaximumFun.org? Hello, this is Amy Mann. And I'm Ted Leo. And we have a podcast called The Art of Process. We've been lucky enough over the past year to talk to some of our friends and acquaintances from across the creative spectrum to find out how they actually work. And so I have to write material that makes sense and makes people laugh. I also have to think about what I'm saying to people. If I kick your ass, I'll make you famous. The fight to get LGBTQ representation in the show. We weirdly don't know as many musicians as you would expect. I really just became a political speechwriter by accident of realizing that I have accidentally uh, pulled my pants down. <laughs> Listen and subscribe at MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcast. It's like if the guinea pig was complicit in helping the scientist. And we're back. So uh, in the break, I realized that one of the dishes that I thought was just that I, that I referred to as, oh, yeah, my mom makes this great chicken and broccoli casserole. Uh huh. I realized is actually... A Midwest casserole. It is not just, you know, a mishmash of things my mom put together. It's called chicken divan mm. or divan. I don't know how you pronounce it. D-I-V-A-N. Uh-huh. Thank you, Kate. And that is that I think will lead us into talking about the Midwest. What do you think? Yeah, I think. Well, casseroles in general feel like a it, Midwest thing. The, yeah. And the casserole, like my sister-in-law makes an incredible squash casserole. That's like the, the in-demand food at the holidays. Like everybody's mm-hmm. like. Elizabeth, you're going to make the squash casserole, right? And it tastes so great every time. And it seems like every casserole has the same base, which Mm -hmm. is Campbell's cream and mushroom soup. Mm -hmm. And that is no accident. That is something – that was a marketing ploy to get people to buy more of their soup and find different uses for it. So it's only really been around in that way for a short amount of time. Yeah, craft – those craft catalogs uh, introduced a lot of things. Yeah. A lot of Thanksgiving dishes came out of that. I remember us talking about that in our Thanksgiving episode. Yep. That uh, marshmallows on top of uh, sweet potatoes mm-hmm. was craft way of selling more marshmallows. But you know what? It turned out to be a weird, delicious thing. Yes, it sure did. Now, and, and then another one of these, like, do we think of deep dish pizza? I don't think of it the same way that I think of like a New York style, like a thin pizza as no, far as being com- a comfort food. It's completely different. Yeah. And it's very – I mean, it is regional in that it's in the Midwest. It's very it's Chicago. Even- it's very specific to Chicago. If you go to mm-hmm. Detroit, you're going to get completely different. They have like the square pizza mm-hmm. and they have conies. That's probably a comfort food for people in the Detroit area. But again, not stuff that you necessarily make at home. Right. Exactly. Those are um, like two specific places. So the other Midwest dishes on here are, of course, <laughs> Kate's tater tot hot dish, chicken wild rice soup, chicken divan, cheese curds, which feels more like an ingredient than a actual like comfort food dish. Maybe it's mm-hmm. comfort. It's comfort snack. Right. Yeah, though, out of this, I feel like the chicken divan casserole might creep to the top. We have to have a casserole. We have to have a casserole on this. Yeah, it's chicken divan. There you go. All right, here's one. Here's a binary. All right. You ready? The Northeast. American Northeast. We're talking New England here. Clam chowder or a lobster roll? 
It's a clam chowder. The lobster it is. roll is so specific. And I like a lobster roll. I don't like a clam chowder, but I have to like Come on, it's a hot steaming bowl of clam. Yeah, yeah, of course it's the clam chowder. I do love a lobster roll, though. Oh, sure, uh, I, another one popped into my head. Sorry, this is going to keep happening. Go ahead. Another one popped into my head for New Orleans. Yes. I think we picked the right winner in gumbo. Uh, I did want to give a shout out to the group comfort food of a crawfish boil. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that is, the, and it always homemade because, you know, just throw out that newspaper and invite everyone you know over to the house. That is, there's nothing more comforting than that. Except for gumbo. All right, let's go to the northwest. We were up in the northeast. Now let's move to the northwest. It feels I feel like a, a weatherman right now. Um, <laughs> and uh, in the northwest, it's uh, it's salmon. It's all things salmon. Yeah, like Seattle. You know that whole region, Portland. There's a lot of great. I don't think of that as like a comfort food area. No, me neither. I think of it as cold and rainy. But great. Well, I think of it as like a great foodie towns, like Seattle and Portland are great foodie towns, but I don't think of them as having like specific cuisine that I know of that is like traditional homemade Seattle food. Yeah. That is as comforting as like the salmon feels so healthy. Yeah. You know what I I mean? It's got to be the Marion Berry pie. We got to get a dessert in there, right? All right. Is Marion Berry pie is a, is a specific Seattle, uh, or yeah, specific it's a, Pacific Northwest. It's North a pie North that North. was arrested for smoking crack. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> oh, you're such a jerk. You're welcome. All right. Marion Berry pie kind of wins just by default. Yeah, Marion Berry is like a, a how do I describe it? It's got like uh it's it's like a tart tart more tart but sweet. It's they're they're sort of similar to the blackberry. Mm-hmm. Okay. I do love, oh man, blackberry pie was one of my comfort foods growing up because we had across the street from my house, there was a blackberry patch and we used to go out as kids and pick blackberries and then we'd bring them home and my mom would make pie out of it. And just to know that this pie was made out of what we gathered as a kid was just mind blowing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That is pretty amazing. So, yeah, I mean, by one proxy, you, the apple cake would be one like, but it's very specific. The Jewish apple cake that my father's mother's family made that mm-hmm. Jennifer learned the recipe for and it's made for my birthday a couple of times is the best cake. It gets better the longer it's like by day three, it's the greatest cake ever made because it gets, it keeps getting more and more oh, yeah. and more delicious. And it Let takes me ask- forever to make it. That is, <laughs> look, that's part of comfort food. All of these things are slow cookers. Some of them are even slow prep. Yes. Though, and now that I'm thinking about it, Washington State is apples and cherries, which are arguably two of the best pies. Mm-hmm. Definitely argued already on this show. Yes. So, yeah, it's got to be a pie out of the Northwest, right? That's comforting. Yes. But All right. not the pie we would have thought. No. Sorry, Agent Cooper. All right. Now let's go to the American Southwest, where we live. Okay. Yes. Uh, I would say this is everywhere from Texas to California, and that's... Chili, that is a lot of great Mexican food, that is nachos, that is chimichangas, that's fish tacos in some of the coastal areas. Yep. There is uh, the burrito. Yep. There's also a lot of Asian influence, and we haven't talked about a lot of international dishes, but like pho and dim sum are hugely popular comfort foods. Though, I would argue that pho and dim sum are more something you would go out into a restaurant and get, unless you grow up in a household that knows how to cook that, which Hal and I did not. True. Dim sum feels like it's a specifically a restaurant thing. Yeah. I I mean, I think there's a clear winner in this category. Is it chili? Yeah, it's chili. Yeah, it's chili. It's, it's the, the most it, – in, in each of these categories, it's which one of these is most like soup. Yeah. Except for fried chicken. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there are very few non-soupy things. Yeah. So I think we have our finalists now. All right. What are our finalists, Hal? In no particular order, just the way I type them, we have fried chicken, then mac and cheese, matzo ball soup, meatloaf, clam chowder, gumbo, New York style pizza, chicken divan, Marion berry pie, and finally chili. All right. Uh, you want to just start eliminating them? Yeah, I think we should go one at a time. You go first. All right. I don't know um, where that puts us in terms of who makes the final eliminate. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna eliminate. Well, once we get down to two, I don't I don't either. Once we get down to two, we'll decide between the two together. How's that? Yep, sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna eliminate the Mary and Berry pie all, uh, because it feels like we just picked that because we didn't want to pick salmon because salmon didn't feel comforting. It felt healthy. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm going to eliminate clam chowder. Okay. Because because you don't, don't like it. <laughs> people well, people can't even decide which ver- like which what do you like? White milky or red and runny? Or Rhode Island clam chowder, which is gray like the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Enjoy. Enjoy. Live your life. All right. Hal, I hate to do this. Don't do it. I hate to do it, but I'm looking at all of these and I I don't I don't I I think this is a huge contender, but I don't see how it beats the others. I'm going to have to eliminate matzo ball soup. I love matzo ball soup. Don't get me wrong, but there's this is some tough competition. It's up against. I mean, it's up against meatloaf. It's up against fried chicken, mac and cheese. It's up against mac and cheese, for God's sake. I know. You know, and isn't it so weird that after you eliminate my favorite comfort food, that I'm going to eliminate yours, fried chicken. You're eliminating. Are you just doing Five that out of spite? Chicken. Yes, I'm 100 percent doing it out of spite, but I also don't think it's the winner. And I don't want to keep it around and keep hope alive with you, Mark. I need it. Like, let's not live in that world. I well, don't think it's the number one. I it, it might. Uh, it is close, and I love it very much. But I don't think well, it's the ultimate comfort food. Mm-hmm. I think it's a two horse race. I do like that you admitted that it was out of spite. A hundred percent out of spite. How a, so a, a, a Supreme Court cannot make decisions out of spite. This Supreme Court does. <laughs> and that's why we have to go to Hodgman sometimes to have him do some couples therapy. Oh, my therapy God. Runs. I know. Um, all right. So now we're just eliminating until we get down to mac and cheese and meatloaf. Yep. So let's just eliminate gumbo, New York style pizza, uh, chicken divan and chili. Yep. Bye. It's mac and cheese or meatloaf. Uh, it feels like that was always going to be the case. Yeah, these are the two, these are the two heavyweights of comfort food. Um, when you make meatloaf or when you have meatloaf, do you prefer, uh, gravy or ketchup crust? I grew up with the ketchup crust, so yeah, I, me I, too. I prefer that. I don't, I have nothing against gravy as a crust, but like you're supposed to take Heinz ketchup mm-hmm. and then it, be, it gets like so deep red, it's almost brown when it bakes and then mm-hmm. like it's delicious. So good. And then I put more ketchup on it because I – Because you're a ketchup, ketchup fan. Yeah. I love ketchup except because it too. wasn't a hot dog. I put more ketchup on it. Here's my thought on this because they're both I think fairly even contenders. OK. Here is what I think might be a swaying factor and you tell me. A good meatloaf, like you bite into a good meatloaf that tastes like nostalgia and home and all of those flavors working wonders uh, and coming together in this perfect concoction of comfort food. It takes a certain skill to do that. Uh-huh. But in a world where everyone wants and needs to be comforted, mac and cheese can either be made in the fanciest way as a casserole with a million other things in it, or it can be made by a six-year-old out of a box. Right. I think that as a great unifier in a time when everyone needs comfort, which is all the time, I would argue, I think the accessibility of mac and cheese might put it over the top for me. What do you think? Yeah, I think that there's something to mac and cheese that there are so many different versions of it that are good, Mm -hmm. whether it's baked with a crust on top, whether Mm -hmm. it's creamy and gooey, uh, whether you cut up hot dogs and put it in there or, or put bacon in there or put nothing in there at all. Like it's, it's so good. It's hard to have bad mac and cheese. Wait, you don't cut up hot dogs into your meatloaf? Not anymore. Mm, Fair (laughs) enough. I wish, I wish brother, brother, let me tell you hot dogs and meatloaf. The next time I make a meatloaf, I might use hot dogs inside to draw a smiley face so that with each slice, you get a little smiley face of circles. <laughs> right? That I will eat. Yeah. I will gladly eat that. Yeah. There's just like mac and cheese is just the ultimate. It's a hug. It's yeah. the food that hugs you from the inside. Like every bit of eating it feels good and it feels comforting and it just everything melts away just like the cheese melted into the pasta. Yeah. So, people of the world, you have your answer. The best comfort food in America, best American comfort food in America is mac and cheese. Let it hug you. Let it in. Asked and answered. (laughs) Well, we did it. Well, we did it. You know what? I'm so hungry for mac and cheese and meatloaf right now. (laughs) 
I know. <laughs> Quick, I know. let's end this episode so we can go have mac and cheese and meatloaf. Yes, let's hurry. There are so many uh, different topics out there. This one is settled. Thank you to Anna Griffin for suggesting it. Yes, thank you, Anna Griffin. Uh, the rest of you, reach out to us on Twitter at We Got This Tweets. Check out the Maximum Fun subreddit or email us at We Got This Podcast at gmail.com or go to our Facebook group. Share your favorite comfort foods. Share recipes. Let's do a recipe swap. We're all cooking more now anyway. Go to Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash We Got This Podcast. Thank you to producer Ken Plume, researcher Kate McManus, graphic designer Uri Kilman, and QA engineer Jen Alba. And thanks, of course, to our musicians, Jonathan Dinerstein and Mike Furman, for our score and theme song, respectively. And thanks to you, our comfort, the people of the world, who, much like mac and cheese, wrap us in a great big hug by listening to the show and giving us a chance to sit and talk to each other about things that we love and things that we're passionate about. And I hope that you get passionate about them, too. Go on the Facebook group. Talk about it. Share your recipes. If you have a particular comfort food that we did not talk about that you make well and you would love to share it with the world, throw it up on there and we'll all give it a shot. And we won't make it as well as you do, but we'll try. That's right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For Hal Loveland, I'm Mark Agliardi. For Mark Cagliari, I'm Hal Lublin, and don't worry, everybody. We, we got, got this. this. We got this. Oh, we forgot about spaghetti. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.